Welcome, welcome, welcome to this Wise Women Roundtable, looking at the amazing time out of time uh, that we are entering into. Not that we're not always in that anyway, but, but it seems like it's magnified, especially with the total solar eclipse that's happening on April 19, 20, depending on your time zone. Uh, mostly visible in Asia, so not really visible in the US or UK or different places where people might be, but we still feel the effect of it. And the the thing that I find about eclipses, especially a total solar eclipse, is what we experience is an acceleration of what we consider time. So we the so for the people that can see the eclipse, it's happening uh, where I am. It's at night, so there's no, this isn't even a possibility of it's starting out to be day. And then it turns to night for uh, a few minutes and then it comes back to day. So it's kind of like day, night, day, very rapidly, intensely accelerated. And it's a powerful um, energizer and magnifier of any intentions we have, and it will accelerate them. And so one of the things that's been happening for me is I've been thinking a lot about the mysteries of time. I think about them all the time anyway, because I'm just like into time. <laughs> I've always been into time. It's one of my favorite things to contemplate. And recently, just a few days ago, I had a dream that I was taking time portals and they were like these little balls of light, but or kind of cubes of light. And I was like lining them up and it was past, present and future. And I got them all in a line so it would portal you into present now somehow or something. I don't really remember all the details. It was very vivid though. And it was like something wild is going on with time right now in my personal experience. And so um, we are also coming into the uh, Beltane cross quarter and to the Celtic people, the cross quarter times were a between time. So it was between an equinox and a solstices. Uh, solstice. And so it was a, a time between time um, that they used and they celebrated usually at the new moon or the full moon or both. Sometimes they had a whole two week celebration um, around that. So we're going to start this eclipse window um, April 1920 with this new moon total solar eclipse at 29 degrees Aries. It's the second new moon in Aries. Uh, which is a rare and amazing event. The last time this happened was in 2004. The next time it'll happen will be in 2042. So every 19 years. And last time there was a partial solar eclipse. And next time, I don't think there's a solar eclipse at all. I can't remember exactly. I looked it up, but now I don't remember. Anyway, but the point is we have a total solar eclipse with this one. So making it amazing, rare, powerful, um, energizing this, time around Beltane and the the uh, lunar eclipse, which is just a penumbral eclipse. It's not a major eclipse at all, but it will complete the eclipse window is happening on the exact astrological Beltane of May 5, when the sun reaches 15 degrees Taurus. So we have this air, you're starting this eclipse window with this Aries energy. We're completing this eclipse window in the cross quarter um, with the Taurus energy. And so the intentions that we're holding are being accelerated and amplified. And the whole two week window I often re like to refer to as an eclipse cauldron, an alchemical cauldron where we can have transformational um, possibilities, changes that take place because we're not in ordinary time. So, um, and, and also during this time, Mercury's going retrograde in Taurus. <laughs> So we have, we have all these things that are happening that are just like highlighting this uh, Beltane as we're moving into the Beltane window. And um, I wanted to share a piece on um, from uh, Thoth. Um, this comes from the Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean. That was something that was gifted to me back in 1998, when after I had this profound experience of encountering Thoth and um, sort of a weird, like I wasn't even trying to have this experience. And uh, <clears throat> somebody gave me the, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean. And one of the favorite, one of my favorite things he talks about is time. So I just wanted to share a little bit of what he says about time. And then I'm going to turn this over to Sarah to share, uh, for her to share a little bit about her experience and what's been going on. So here we go. Far through strange spaces have I journeyed into the depth of the abyss 
of time, learning strange and yet stranger mysteries until in the end, all was revealed. Know ye that mystery is only mystery when it is knowledge unknown to man. When you have plumbed the heart of all mystery, knowledge and wisdom will surely be thine. Seek ye and learn that time is the secret whereby ye may be free of this space. Once in a pastime, I spoke to the dweller, asked the mystery of time and space, asked him the question that surged in my being saying, oh, master, what is time? When he spoke, the master said, know ye, O Thoth, in the beginning, there was the void and nothingness, a timeless, spaceless nothingness. And into the nothingness came a thought, purposeful, all pervading, and it filled the void. There existed no matter, only force, a movement, a vortex of vibration of the purposeful thought that filled the void. And I questioned the master saying, was this thought eternal? And answered me, the dweller said, in the beginning, there was eternal thought and for thought to be eternal, time must exist. So into the all pervading thought grew the law of time. I, time, which exists through all space, floating in a smooth, rhythmic movement that is eternally in a state of fixation. Time changes not, but all things change in time. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Sarah. Wow, okay then. Hmm, that was beautiful. It's something that you could carry on reading or listening to for a very long time, again and again and again. Yeah, so thank you. So, yeah, it's very interesting bringing into our space today the notion of time. How I have been experiencing time has actually been a continuation of what we might call in a very human sense, very difficult situations in my life or difficult experiences. Um, my shoulder is healing, which is good. My collarbone is healing. Um, throughout this time as well, we have um, experienced saying goodbye to a very dear member of our family, a little, little white and black feline called Ping. Ping was 14 years of age when he passed, but he was still like a very playful little soul. And with all of this going on, because it wasn't a sudden event, it was a gradual, quite fast actually decline, um, but it went over a few months. So all of this has been kind of like moving into each other. So I'd just like to share one of the ways that I have been navigating this time that has helped me massively and that is by working with nature which I always do and using essences and homeopathy and other beautiful plant-based um, potions if you like to help me lots of essential oils really leaning into the Chinese traditions which are very very useful for any sort of muscular stuff coming back from their sort of martial arts traditions, all of those things have been really helpful. But coming back to time, um, what I have found really useful is just doing my best to move into the space of now. So being mindful is not a word that I have ever really got, and I don't know if I, it's really my thing, but I can dance with now. And one of the ways that I've been doing that in the last week or so is really by calling in what we tend to call in the priestess traditions living ceremony and so every day can be can feel very hard or less hard but every day is a ceremony and so the way that we can all do that and it's probably something that you do anyway uh, people who are inclined to watch this kind of thing so we might begin our day with some meditation or mindfulness or journaling or oracle card reading that is living ceremony to me but the ceremony itself is kind of become arrives with a beginning and an end and it becomes a container for the day and what made me help me see that I was doing this is when we came to say goodbye to Ping and we buried him on our land and we held a funeral just my partner and I 
And we have a couple of acres here. It's not huge, but it's not tiny either. And the land loved Ping as he loved the land. And what we did together um, was we walked around every single piece of the land and in each space we remembered him. And we picked a flower or a piece of the tree or whatever, a piece of grass and just put it in a little container and we'd walk around the whole land in lots of tears as we were doing this. But it felt like such a beautiful, and at each point we decided, okay, let's go here now, let's go here. And so we'd visited all different parts and we ended up with this beautiful bowl, this beautiful gift of all these pieces of nature that had known him and that he knew. And we placed them all with his body into the earth. And I was like, Okay, so I have spoken about living ceremony many, many times to priestesses that I've worked with. And I understood it with my head. Now I'm actually living it. I'm actually walking my day with it. And it felt like a really beautiful thing. And I then it occurred to me, well, I can do this every day, even with a much more, if you like, mundane day. I can begin my day by walking outside and picking a flower or just being with a flower or, you know, lighting a candle or being with a crystal or in whatever ways. And they're things that I would do anyway, but I'd never actually brought them. I'd never actually created this living ceremony for myself and my life, for my work. And so for me, it, it's really been a very beautiful way of navigating now. And that thread to the sacred has really, and to nature, to the heart of nature, has really helped me stay connected to Ping and to connect connected to my grief, stay connected to how I feel. And it's also made it beautiful, even though it's been very sad. It's what I will remember. So... That has been my way of navigating time, and uh, I hope it's helpful to others. And on that note, I will hand over to you, Nalini. Thank you, Sarah. Um, let's just check. Yes, I took myself back off mute. Okay. <laughs> um, it has been an interesting passage. I, w I could say time, but that would put a different flavor on it. Um, the eclipse that's upcoming following a very massive full moon. If I'm right, Kaylin, um, this eclipse is happening at the North Lunar Node. It's conjunct to it. And Pluto is actually squared to the nodes at the moment. So we have what that always means for me in my beginner's astrology knowledge is that there's a volcano erupting. There's something and that might be doing it very gracefully and the magma's flowing over and, and nourishing the land, but there's dredging happening at both the direction where we are headed, which is what the North node symbolizes to me. And from the South node, which is where we've been karmically, historically, and we have karmic completions going on right now. We are all in a cycle of karmic completions. And rather than have that be frightening, it's actually quite joyous. It's like all these things actually are completing. And what Source keeps saying to me in various ways that crack me up um, are basically, so let go already. You know, I mean, it's time to keep the wisdom and let the lessons go. You know, we so value our lessons learned, and as we should do, I suppose, but it's it's valuing the wisdom gained and then letting the form of the lesson, the way it has shown up in time, letting that go. We all have patterns, especially if you're listening to this, we all have patterns that we say, oh, this has happened over and over, or, oh, that didn't happen for 20 years, and it's back. And, it's, and we look at these and we think, what? Well... Part of this is the astrological configuration that we came in through. We set up our patterns. It helped to put them in place. It's not the cause, but as Kaylin always says, we work with it. And it's it was a helper and an ally. So we have this full moon that just happened and the eclipse window that we're moving into that is a massive 
incitement, one could even say indictment for change. You know, things are changing. What is happening is changing. And we can be responsible for responding to that, which is the thread of sacredness that carries us through. How am I responding in and to this moment? Or we can let the other karmic completions kind of take over. Simply really, I believe that the self-blame thing has to go at this point, but it's really more of a habit. Like, oh, let's, let's, this is what's completing. I need to look at it, perhaps, if it's been unobserved, but more look at and appreciate rather than judge. Somewhere in there, there's a thread of sacred from which we have learned. And so just appreciating that wisdom and then let the whole pattern, the whole lesson, the whole schoolroom, the whole curriculum go. And I can truthfully say I thought I had done for most things, not everything, of course. And I, what this particular window is bringing up is every little thing in the like the vignettes of memories, you know, the montages of things, the little blips that come in if we're paying attention of, oh, well, this was wrong or that was wrong or this could have been done better or that was this just self-judgment, self-blame. And then ways I have projected that. And those are not things I've ever wanted to look at, but we must, you know, well, look at, oh, look at what that person's doing. I don't know, but let's look at how I'm doing it. This, all of this is actually what's changing right now. Instead of looking at that that way, it's saying, all right, there is a truth here because truth, you know, truth, the big one is one. And we all have our little fractals and our our, our pieces of weighing of seeing it. But it's like, what is the truth here in the sacred thread that's carrying me through this? So, for example, I had planned, which I don't do anymore. So that should have been my first clue. I had taken this particular week um, blocked from appointments. This was my only appointment this week. And I was so looking forward to it. And um, just to to have time to write. The, the plan part of it was... I'm going to write. I have this writing thing that I need to finish and I'm going to do it this week. Well, the morning of Easter Sunday, which would have been the beginning of it, I woke up and I thought, hmm, you know, that out of balance feeling. I know you do. You feel a little off and it's like, instead of going from the off, um, it's just saying, all right, let's just move through the day. And then as soon as I really realized, okay, there's some, there's something clearing here. There's something processing here. There's something moving through, which I need to let go. The symptoms set in. I mean, I could have timed it to the minute with that thought. So I decided, all right, I'm going to simply let this go. All the things that it is. And it was about a, a lot of things. This particular passage is about death and rebirth. We're going to see endings and beginnings. And they happen simultaneously. Only we, we're trained mentally not to see the beginning. We see the end. And we must grieve the losses. And I've been watching, mostly in those around me, the stages of grief happening all at once. You know, anger, denial, bargaining, depression. Oh, <laughs> you know, and and I mean, and myself as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. But I was watching this move through and it was like, oh, OK, I used to be one of those who was not <clears throat> always kind to my body. And I would take the remedies and trundle off to work, you know, knowing that my body was saying, hello, I'm showing you something. This time. Um, source basically said no. And so there I was, you know, on day two and the symptoms are presenting more righteously instead of getting better. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm feeling, all right, I guess we're going back to bed. <laughs> and so, um, <clears throat> which I'm, I'm happy to take care of my body at this in this way now, but it occurred to me that, oh, I, I guess I won't be writing today. I guess I'll be listening. And so the sacred thread for me that is getting me through this time 
has been that listening and what is wanting and what is balancing, not just what my body needs, which is always important, but what is listening and what is balancing. And what kept popping up in my inbox, I was only checking a couple of times a day, which is sort of normal for me, but kept popping up in my box was a an, a yarrow, the, the herb yarrow immersion that someone was doing. And I, I wasn't well enough to be on anyone's Zoom, but it was this interesting thing of, hmm, this is getting my attention. So I looked into it and the properties, the, the actually ally that Yarrow is, completely made sense. The connection between the heart emerging into the heart and the throat, which is not just about speaking, but how we express and how all of that has been shifting for me and I know for all of us and how this herb knows exactly what to do as they all do if we let them do their thing you know it knows how to do exactly what the body needs does it needs an astringency does it need a purging does it need this does it need that and the, the consciousness of the herb ally will know exactly what to do so Sarah would you mind showing us what yarrow looks like I I've asked her because I don't have yeah she's beautiful it comes white pink yellow but these beautiful little flowers and I believe when it when it starts to sprout it actually has what's called a pinnate leaves they yeah they spin out from a single leaf See, look how that looks like a sponge or a a scrub brush and this is what yarrow does and so I gleefully reached into what would have been a cubby and is now a very small box because I still have in my mind that what I own all fits in four large suitcases. I found out recently it no longer does. It's still pretty small. It's a small box of books because I can't go into a bookstore without adult supervision. And I have my herbs and my, my supplements because really these are friends that I choose to live with. So I went into my supply and no yarrow, which is odd. So I ordered some, of course. And I was feeling this though, the warrior healer, the the blending of what we see as masculine and feminine in our nature, in nature, and how that needs to balance. So I've been holding onto, I suppose, that thread of balance, peace, and harmony, which came from the Libra full moon, and is moving into this, this amazing alignment in Aries, which is a very critical degree so it's moving into it if i recall correctly kaylin this is a hybrid eclipse it's where where it can be seen it goes from annular to full to partial which means we're getting everything we won't see it here any of us but we're getting all of the gradations of eclipse which is all of the gradations of change accelerated into a single phase of this and so what i've noticed with this span of what we call time this week with the symptoms moving through very quickly they're following the progression that one might see in a cold or the flu but i'm not i learned as a child don't let your mind do that it's like what what is healing here and it has to do with freeing up all the ways i have held my heart hostage to self-blame self-criticism to loss and to somehow not being perfect which please you know as if that even exists so what i can offer is simply that um, as i moved through that as i began to just ask for the assistance of source which is my ceremony is how I walk through each day is okay source how should what should we do today how should we walk through today because I'm able to do that I mean I have the situation to be able to do that this one has been you know sort of like thou shalt lie down and rest and, and it wasn't that I I don't have the tendency that says no anymore I used to but it was interesting because within that it was what is important listening listening feeling like the feeling kind of listening through the heart to those sacred threads that we all are we are those threads we are those configurations that is the the truth the big truth that is the real that is coming through all of this 
And it helps so much to hold on to that because when we do, we will not recognize ourselves, you know, further on in this year, later on in this passage. And this will be such a good thing. It'll be so exciting. You know, the, the caterpillar becomes the butterfly, becomes the phoenix, becomes the eagle. They, they all change. And then we feel the stars that we are in our bones, in the stones, so that everything is all connected. And what's helped me this week, and I'm amazed I got through this long without coughing. <laughs> what's helped me with this week has been that just riding that being that sacred thread and letting it decide letting source be the doer so that's what i have to offer at this time oh that's so beautiful i just want to make a confirmation too for something you said about moving from the heart into the throat or how this is the heart and throat connection because we've been in the heart chakra gate of the venus cycle uh that started in i think march 23rd and we're going into the throat chakra which i think is april 23rd second or something like that when when we go into the throat chakra gate so these two things have been very and i've been feeling it also as i've been going through my own health challenges with coughing and all that good stuff uh so i just that is so beautiful and i'm glad you brought that up and thank you for that and sarah also love your um your really vulnerable and and powerful sharing and reminder of how we can be in living ceremony in every moment. That is just amazing. So, wow. We are so grateful for your um, joining us and we look forward to connecting with you the next time. Thank you.